Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Venom Vlog and today we are continuing Carnage Week uh, even though we're like a week late on this and I'm so sorry. I just haven't been feeling well this past weekend and now that I'm home from work I wanted to get this up as soon as possible because I could feel that my head was getting worse and I was like let's record this now before anything else happens. And I also just recorded like a like a song kind of thing <laughs> for you guys. Uh, it's kind of silly but I just didn't want to do a traditional toy review. I wanted to do something quick and kind of fun and something that would make me smile. So uh, I did that and that's already recorded and I'll have that up for you guys uh, you know, probably before this episode and then I'll try to have the next uh, Carnage Week episode up very soon after this if I can. I think I'm going to try to record it right after this and it's going to be about Extreme Carnage number one. So we're going to detour a little bit from uh, what we were doing with, uh, you know, next in line is the Carnage series by Jerry Conway. We will get to those, but I need a few more days to finish reading them. So to buy me some time, I picked up Extreme Carnage number one in comic shops uh, that just came out and I will do that tonight. I'll record that as well after this and I'll get that up as the next Carnage Week episode. So without further ado, let's dive right into Superior Carnage. Written by Kevin Shinnick and art by Steven Segovia and also Dan Mixia, who helped out on issue five uh, with great covers by Clayton Crane and Marco Cicchetto. Like there's a lot of great people that worked on this book. Uh, I really like Kevin Shinnick. I was actually able to interview him many years ago when I was on Nerd Nation Radio with my friend Gene Hoyle. And he was a blast. He's such a nice guy. And uh, I actually ended up liking this series. So I've never read this before. I think I might have said that in previous streams. Uh, I've never read Superior Carnage. And so I had no idea that Superior Spider-Man, which was a series I did like when that was coming out, I had no idea he was in this and that he fought Carnage. <laughs> I just didn't know that was a thing that happened uh, because I really liked the, you know, the main Superior Spider-Man book. And then I think I got the Superior Team-Up book but I didn't know that Superior Spider-Man was in this. And as someone at that time who was a completionist of Superior Spider-Man stories, because I really liked Doc Ock being Spider-Man, um, I can't believe I missed this. And so as I was reading this, I was I was like, oh, wow. I thought they just took the name Superior Carnage from the Superior Spider-Man story. I didn't know Superior Spider-Man was actually going to show up in this. So that was a nice surprise for me. So I really dug that. And if you like this story, this story originally came out around 2013, and it was collected in a trade for it just called Superior Carnage, which has issues one through five in it. But I don't think the trade paperback has the annual in it. And we're going to talk about the annual today because the annual is more of a setup for a future story uh, about Deadpool and Carnage fighting each other. And I don't know if I've already talked about that before or not, uh, but I'm still going to talk about it anyway at the end of this because it is a nice uh, you know, epilogue to this series, Superior Carnage, but it's also a nice precursor to the Deadpool versus Carnage series. So if we already covered that in that episode, I'm sorry for a repeat. I'll try to be brief in my discussion of the annual in this one. Um, and then also you can pick up the many hosts of Carnage trade paperback. That's also available out there in print uh, and in digital, and that also features some of the issues that we're going to talk about today. So basically what the story is, it's like a breakout story. We have the wizard, uh, who was once a very lethal Fantastic Four villain, and Ulysses S. Claw, who is also a Fantastic Four villain and a Black Panther villain, and was portrayed by Venom Let There Be Carnage director Andy Serkis in the movie Black Panther, and then I think also Age of Ultron. So uh, so that was cool to see Claw in this, um, and that's also played by Andy Serkis in the movies, who has a connection to Venom in the you know the real world. So I was like, oh, that's pretty awesome that that all worked out that way. Um, but it's it's Claw and Wizard teaming up to break Carnage out of prison. Uh, this is right after he was lobotomized by Scarlet Spider, which we talked about recently. And uh, and But the problem here is that the wizard is experiencing early onset dementia after a recent battle he had with Black Bolt from the Inhumans. And he's having trouble controlling the symbiote because that's kind of his whole plan is they want to show up and they want to rebuild the Frightful Four and he wants Carnage to be the fourth member. But he knows Carnage is unpredictable, so he's hoping with his powers of you know mind control and stuff like the wizard has he's hoping he can control Cletus Cassidy but uh, when he gets there he, he's in for a rude awakening because Cletus Cassidy has been lobotomized so there's nothing really to control so he struggles to control the suit and he's unable to but luckily Claw is there as his muscle and Claw uh, you know uses sound waves and stuff to like you know as his power set uh, from his right hand you know and uh, or one of his hands <laughs> and he blasts this like sound wave out so he's able to you know keep Carnage at bay for a second until Wizard can come up with a backup plan uh, but as someone who is now actually starting to experience early onset dementia that was also just kind of like mind bending like that all these years that we've been doing this show and I haven't been able to get to this story. And at the time I get to it, it's a couple months after I find out that I am starting to experience early onset dementia. So this was wild, like reading this. It was just like talk about the perfect timing and perfect storm 
because it made me really sympathize with Wizard, actually, even though he's a bad guy. And I, although I like the character because I'm a big Fantastic Four fan, I just, I never, I, it, it made me, you know, kind of understand a little bit about his, like what he's going through in this story. And I, I wasn't ready for that. And I, I also found that to be a nice bonus to the story on a personal level, you know, and I try not to let the personal things too much affect my enjoyment or rating of something, whether it's positive or negative. But, uh, but in this case, I, I couldn't help it. I was like, wow, I, I understand what he's kind of going through. And he calls, you know, claw the wrong name. Sometimes a wizard has a son who he, this is this whole thing he's doing in this book is he's trying to impress his son, um, or at least the clone of his son, I think is, I think his son died and there's a clone of his son going around, but he's lost touch with his son and he's trying to like regain and rebuild that, that, uh, you know, connection with him. And so he's like, well, I'm going to go show him that I'm not a, a fraud or a hack and that I could be a, a serious villain. So I'm going to attack city hall in New York city. And, uh, and I'm going to have the claw with me, but he sometimes calls claw, you know, his son, like, so, so there's a little bit of that and Claw kind of leans into it a little bit because, you know, Wizard is the guy in charge, he's paying. And so he's kind of like, oh, whatever, if he thinks I'm his son, I'll play along, you know, just to help him out or whatever. And I, but I also think Claw has a little bit of sympathy because Claw's also, he had a, a father who was like a, a, you know, crazy bad guy at one point. And, uh, and I think he kind of saw that Wizard was trying to be a good dad in a way, in his own way. And I think that helped him connect to, to him. And, and that's why he's working with them. Um, but they also, because I said they're rebuilding the Frightful Four, they do have a fourth member, Dr. Carl Malice, who is an old Spider-Woman villain. And he's kind of like their fourth member. And so when they can't control Carnage, what they end up doing is they, uh, you know, because Cletus is lobotomized, they find a way to separate the suit from Carnage and bond it to Dr. Malice, uh, Dr. Carl Malice here. And so he becomes the, you know, the new superior Carnage who Wizard has under his control when he can. Because obviously with dementia, he's ha he has moments where he forgets things, forgets where he is, uh, forgets who he's talking to. And in those moments, he loses control of his power and his control over Dr. Malice, who is the new superior Carnage. He, he loses control over that because obviously he doesn't know where he is. He doesn't know what's going on. And so his powers kind of flicker. And, uh, and that causes Carnage to once again go, you know, crazy because the symbiote is still very much alive. It still knows what's going on. It knows that it's not part, you know, it's not bonded with Cletus anymore. And so the suit is, it's not happy. And it, it kind of wants to kill Wizard and Claw for what they did, um, but, and, you know, until Wizard gets control of it again. So that's kind of the, the book is just them all teaming up and that going back and forth like that. Um, and so I really like that. I liked all the dynamic, the character dynamics and stuff between everyone. Um, I thought it was all really good. I thought they did a great job. And then towards the end, like I said, Spider-Man shows up, uh, who is obviously Dr. Otto Octavius. And uh, he's, you know, in Spider-Man's body. And he shows up to fight this new Frightful Four, which is really three members. Because after Carl Mar uh, Malice joins with Carnage, it's just three of them walking around. <laughs> so, but technically it is four because Carnage, like we always say, Carnage is Cletus Cassidy. It's, it's you know, bonded like with his blood it's part of him and so technically even though the suit is on someone else they are two beings uh in a way uh so i i, I kind of like that i thought that was kind of fun that they they made the frightful four three physical members that you see but really there's kind of you know four people there um but I like that. But in order to bring the battle to an end, because it gets really, really intense as, you know, uh, Wizard and everyone tries to, talk, you know, attack City Hall, Sp uh, Superior Spider-Man and his goon squad, his men, they bring Cletus Cassidy's lobotomized body to the fight. And that distracts the suit long enough to kind of separate from Carl Malice, which everyone is attacking and they're, you know, they're trying to separate it too. Uh, but then once it leaves Carl, it does bond with the wizard temporarily. And Superior Spider-Man then has to fight the wizard um, who is controlled by the symbiote. Uh, so it's kind of a re reversal thing, which I liked, where it was like wizard was controlling the symbiote all this time, um, trying to at least. And, uh, and then once it's free, it bonds with him and takes control of him. So I kind of like that role reversal there. I thought that was neat. Uh, but then Claw comes in and helps out and everyone starts fighting uh, the wizard uh, symbiote and Claw ends up getting killed in the process. He gets stabbed. And, uh, and I'm like, oh, no, no, like, I was actually starting to like Claw, and I like this relationship with him and Wizard. I thought that was a really good camaraderie there between villains. Um, and also, I'm like, no, Andy Serkis, no. <laughs> uh, so he gets stabbed, and he's he's dying, basically, and finally gives out, and he dies, uh, like, a couple minutes later as the battle ensues in the background. 
and Claw does die at the end of issue four. So issue five starts off, and now it's, you know, Wizard again bonded with the symbiote fighting Superior Spider-Man. His, his men or his goons in the background protecting Cletus's body. And basically, Wizard's like, I'm going to cut through you, Spider-Man. I'm going to cut through your guards, and then I'm going to kill the Wizard here, and I'm going to rebond with Cletus. You know, we're going to live happily ever after and run around the world killing everybody. And Superior Spider-Man, just in his last act of desperation, they're trying to shoot sound waves and stuff to, to stop him, uh, to stop the symbiote, but it, it doesn't work. And what ends up happening is the symbiote is pulled off enough to where it's uh, it can now, it's like, all right, I'm going to kill Wizard, and then I'll just come after you guys. Maybe I'll even bond with you, Spider-Man. So when it goes to kill Wizard, this energy beam shows up. Like, it just, all of a sudden, this beam of sound hits the symbiote with all its might. And everyone's like, where did that come from? And then you realize that actually the book is being narrated by Claw, by Ulysses S. Claw in the final issue of this, issue five. And he's narrating saying like, I've become one with the sound wall, which is kind of what he taps into to use his powers, uh, kind of like the speed force with the flash in a way. And he's like, I've tapped into it and now I've bonded with it. And I'm existing in another realm or dimension that is parallel to earth uh but it's all sound and he goes and i'm using the last of my strength to protect my friend uh and he does and he and he you know blasts the symbiote and that gives uh, superior spider-man and his men enough time to capture it and seal it up so i thought that was pretty cool that claw went out kind of heroically in a way which was really neat and since then we've only seen him like one time in a comic and i'm guessing that's because continuity wise like maybe the editor didn't know claw died and because he's in physical form again but i would love to see a story where claw comes back into physical form from the sound wall or or becomes a new type of villain or being um i would really love to see something like that maybe in a fantastic four book or a black panther book that would be great um so anyway that's how this series ends is that, you know, Claw's consciousness is narrating us out as we see Superior Spider-Man bring the Carnage symbiote to his headquarters on Spider Island, along with the other monsters that he has captured in other cells nearby, like in other tubes. Um, and then we also get some closure for Wizard, who, even though he's still experiencing dementia and stuff, at the end of this, he gets an email from his son and it looks like their their relationship will rekindle in some way. So you're kind of like, oh, yay, uh, he, he got to talk to his son and his son is proud of him or something. But then you're like, oh, but his son's proud of him for trying to kill everybody. <laughs> so so you're kind of like, is that a happy ending? I don't really know. Um, but we also discovered that uh, now that the suit is on Spider Island with, uh, with Superior Spider-Man and his men, we see that Cletus Cassidy, though, is somehow out of his lobotomized state. And he is very upset that his symbiote is missing. So that's where the book ends, uh, issue five. Uh, but there is still more. We have the the Carnage Annual, Superior Carnage Annual, which came out, I think, like six or seven months later, almost a whole year later after the series ended. So that was just really weird uh, when people were collecting this. And then like a whole like six months later or something, they get this annual. And it's like, wait, what? Like, what's we got an annual for a series that ended like uh, at issue five. But that's what we get here. I don't know why they decided to call it superior carnage and why they set it up that way but you know they did and it's kind of a precursor like i said to colin bunn's next series which is you know deadpool versus carnage so this is like the the intro to that and this is um written by colin bunn so you know i mentioned that here that obviously he's the writer of this because he writes the deadpool carnage book after this and it has art by kim jacinto and mike henderson and this book picks up a few months later after uh you know cletus has reawakened and after the suit has been captured and it's kind of near this is near the end of the superior spider-man comic book um so i think at this point uh superior spider-man has fought venom and they did the superior venom story and then now we're getting into like the the end of that run so while that's happening superior spider-man is very busy you know out there in new york and he, and he can't kind of watch over the suit so he entrusts it into his men to do so um so that's kind of where the book starts is like his goon squad are outside the cell where the symbiote is and the symbiote starts uh you know it's not it's like quiet for a few days but then it starts reacting to something and what that something is is we find out that uh you know over in new jersey the, there's a kramer penitentiary we have cletus cassidy there as the new inmate uh this guy named dr jenner he's like a you know a shrink or something at this facility at this uh, penitentiary he pulled some strings. I guess he had some connections and he wanted Cletus to show up here and, and be one of his patients. And for the past few months, he's been working with Cletus and Cletus can tell, hey, I can tell you're kind of a bad guy and you want me for something, but I don't have my symbiote. So I don't really know how we can help each other. And the guy's like, uh, yeah, yeah, you know, in time, we'll, we'll figure all that out. 
and he goes, uh, but for now, you know, you've been a model uh, prisoner. You haven't really done much the past few months. And he's like, yeah, what can I do? I don't have my symbiote. And he's like, he's like, yeah, I understand. He goes, but, you know, I, I want to try to help rebuild the man or whatever. And, of course, you know, the guy's full of crap. Uh, and that's what it turns out to be. Um, Dr. Jenner actually hires uh, one of the other prisoners to shank Cletus Cassidy, uh, which he does. And, uh, and Cletus is now wounded in, in the, uh, you know, in the infirmary or something. He's like in the medical center at the prison and people like these doctors are trying to help him out. And as he gets stabbed, you know, over in, you know, Spider Island, the symbiote reacts to that. So that's why it's screaming is because it sensed Cletus's pain and then it dies the symbiote just writhes and and wiggles around and screams and hollers and then it just uh, hits the ground lifeless it completely dies and i don't know exactly what happened there if i were to guess i'm gonna guess that since it can feel cletus's pain and it can feel this other sliver somewhere else that's being studied in new mexico by this uh the scientist i think it was like maybe if we transfer the last of our strength into that little sliver somehow or maybe just awaken that little sliver because it's been torn off and it's you know it's being studied in a lab somewhere like maybe we can act you know like give it the strength that we don't uh, we don't have here in our cell we can give it to that little sliver and it can break out so over in new mexico now we cut down there and there's a morse laboratories and there's a female scientist in there and she's studying the symbiote that little sliver and apparently a little sliver was given to her after the spider, you know, the superior Spider-Man battle and stuff. And she was given a sliver to examine and try to learn about its healing capabilities. And I guess they want to apply that somehow, you know, to the to the world. And um, and so as she's studying it, it goes through the uh, the scope like right into her eye and stabs her right in the eye. And then it infects her. It takes over her mind. It goes right into her brain and she becomes uh, a carnage type, although she's not covered in the symbiote fully. Oh, I think she is at one point. Um, but at first she just has like a red eye and then she goes home to her abusive boyfriend and she kills him. And then the suit from there spends the whole book moving from New Mexico, trying to get to New Jersey in time before Cletus Cassidy bleeds out and dies. And so that's pretty much the whole crux of the book. And so by the time it gets there, it bonds with the warden and is walking into the prison as Dr. Jenner reveals his plan that he wants to kill Cletus Cassidy now that he's on his deathbed and, you know, in the infirmary, he's like, I know your suit is coming. I know because, you know, Cletus has been talking in his, in his injured state. Like he's like, it seems like he's hallucinating, but Dr. Jenner knows, okay, he's actually telling me what's happening. He can see kind of through the symbiote's eyes and the symbiote is coming here to bond with him. And when it gets here, it's going to find a dead Cletus and it's going to find me a stronger host because Cletus is weak. He's, you know, he's just a weak man now. And, uh, and, and now it's going to come for me, which I thought was weird because Cletus, even without the suit is still one of the world's number one serial killers. So I didn't really like that too much in this annual that he was just like, Oh, without the suit, I'm nothing. It's like, no, nah, come on, dude. You're, 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 you, there's a lot of fight in you, Cletus. And you've done a lot of horrible things without the suit. The suit just made you worse. Um, so I didn't really like that too much if I had some criticisms here. But in the end, it really doesn't matter because the suit does show up uh, on the you know body of the warden. And that uh, warden symbiote you know guy attacks the uh, Dr. Jenner and then, you know, throws him into the side and then rebonds with Cletus. Even though Cletus is a dead body, because what Dr. Jenner does is he suffocates Cletus with a pillow um, and and kills him. And then now they're in the morgue and they're standing over a dead Cletus body and the symbiote rebonds with it and finds a way to heal him and bring him back from death, basically. So now that he's fully carnage again, he go he goes around the whole facility and he's killing everybody. Like he kills Dr. Jenner, he kills the warden, every guard, every prisoner. And he ends by killing the prisoner that uh, shanked him or, you know, shivved him earlier in the book, uh, who of course, like he said, like I said earlier, he revealed that Dr. Jenner hired him to do it. Um, so, but Cletus is like, yeah, I already took care of that guy and now I'm going to take care of you. So he kills him. And now that everyone's in the facility is dead, Carnage is like, all right, time to hit the road. They say you can't go home again, but you know, I'm, I'm going to find where home is and I'm, I'm going to go after it. And I think that leads into Deadpool versus Carnage because I think Carnage then is like, all right, I'm going to go find Shriek, I think. And that's kind of how he ends up in, in battle with Deadpool. So, um, so yeah, so, you know, Colin Bunn does follow up the story, like I said, with the events of Deadpool vs. Carnage. I'll put a link to that down below if you haven't seen that video. We did that video, like, a year, maybe two ago. <laughs> like, we've done it so long ago. And here, I, this story is a precursor to it, and I never read it. So I'm glad we finally got to it and got, to, you know, got to talk about it on this channel. 
And uh, like I said, I'll put a link down below to Deadpool vs. Carnage if you haven't watched that episode yet. Uh, but overall, I enjoyed the series. I have some criticisms, obviously, of it, like with the, the characterization and stuff of Cletus. But as a Fantastic Four fan, I really liked seeing a new version of the Frightful Four. And it was really cool to see Superior Spider-Man battle Carnage. Like, I really just dug that overall. I thought it was awesome. So it was a, definitely a fun read, and I highly recommend picking it up on print or in print or digital today if you've never checked it out before. And let me know your thoughts on the story down below if you have read it before. And as always, we can continue the conversation down there. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that notification bell for more Symbiote content on this channel. Thanks so much for watching. See you in the future. Peace.